The Rhind Mathematical Papyrus RMP, also designated as Papyrus British Museum 10057 and PBM 10058, is one of the best known examples of ancient Egyptian mathematics. It is named after Alexander Henry Rhind, a Scottish antiquarian, who purchased the papyrus in 1858 in Luxor, Egypt. It was apparently found during illegal excavations in or near the Ramesseum. It dates to around 1550 BC. The British Museum, where the majority of papyrus is now kept, acquired it in 1865 along with the Egyptian mathematical leather roll, also owned by Henry Rind. There are a few small fragments held by the Brooklyn Museum in New York City and an 18 cm central section is missing. It is one of the two well-known mathematical papyri along with the Moscow Mathematical Papyrus. The Rhind papyrus is larger than the Moscow Mathematical Papyrus, while the latter is older. The Rhind Mathematical Papyrus dates to the Second Intermediate Period of Egypt. It was copied by the scribe Armes, i.e., Armos. Armes is an older transcription favored by historians of mathematics, from a now lost text from the reign of King Amenemhat III. 12th dynasty. Written in the Hieratic script, this Egyptian manuscript is 33 cm 13 in tall and consists of multiple parts which in total make it over 5 m long. The papyrus began to be transliterated and mathematically translated in the late 19th century. The mathematical translation aspect remains incomplete in several respects. The document is dated to year 33 of the Hyksos King Apophis and also contains a separate later historical note on its verso likely dating from the period year 11 of his successor Kamudi in the opening paragraphs of the papyrus Armes presents the papyrus as giving accurate reckoning for inquiring into things and the knowledge of all things mysteries dot all secrets he continues with This book was copied in regnal year 33, month 4 of Akhet, under the majesty of the king of Upper and Lower Egypt, Orzare, given life, from an ancient copy made in the time of the king of Upper and Lower Egypt Nimata. The scribe Amos writes this copy. Several books and articles about the Rhind mathematical papyrus have been published, and a handful of these stand out. The Rhind Papyrus was published in 1923 by Pete and contains a discussion of the text that followed Griffith's Book 1, 2 and 3 outline Chase published a compendium in 1927 29 which included photographs of the text. A more recent overview of the Rhind Papyrus was published in 1987 by Robbins and Shute. Book 1 – Arithmetic and Algebra The first part of the Rhine papyrus consists of reference tables and a collection of 21 arithmetic and 20 algebraic problems. The problems start out with simple fractional expressions, followed by completion problems and more involved linear equations problems. .The first part of the papyrus is taken up by the 2 – N table. The fractions 2, n for odd n ranging from 3 to 101 are expressed as sums of unit fractions. For example, 2 15 equals 1 10 plus 1 30 display style 2 fifteenths equals 1 tenth plus 1 thirtieth. The decomposition of 2, n into unit fractions is never more than four terms long as in for example 2 101 equals 1 101 plus 1 202 plus 1 303 plus 1 606 display style 2 100 firsts equals 1 101st plus 1 202nd plus 1 303rd plus 1 606th 
This table is followed by a much smaller, tiny table of fractional expressions for the numbers 1 through 9 divided by 10. For instance the division of 7 by 10 is recorded as 7 divided by 10 yields 2 thirds plus 1 thirtieth After these two tables, the papyrus records 91 problems altogether, which have been designated by moderns as problems or numbers 1 to 87, including four other items which have been designated as problems 7b, 59b, 61b and 82b. Problems 1 to 7, 7b and 8 to 40 are concerned with arithmetic and elementary algebra. Problems 1 to 6 compute divisions of a certain number of loaves of bread by 10 men and record the outcome in unit fractions. Problems 7 to 20 show how to multiply the expressions 1 plus 1 half plus 1 quarter. Topic: 7 quarters and 1 plus 2 thirds plus 1 third. 2 by different fractions. Problems 21 to 23 are problems in completion, which in modern notation are simply subtraction problems. Problems 24 to 34 are aha problems. These are linear equations. Problem 32, for instance, corresponds in modern notation to solving x plus one third x plus one quarter x equals two for x. Problems 35 to 38 involve divisions of the hekar, which is an ancient Egyptian unit of volume. Beginning at this point, assorted units of measurement become much more important throughout the remainder of the papyrus, and indeed a major consideration throughout the rest of the papyrus is dimensional analysis. Problems 39 and 40 compute the division of loaves and use arithmetic progressions. equals Topic Book Two Geometry equals the second part of the Rhine Papyrus, being problems 41 to 59, 59b and 60, consists of geometry problems. Pete referred to these problems as mensuration problems. Equals Topic Volumes. Equals Problems 41 to 46 show how to find the volume of both cylindrical and rectangular granaries. In problem 41, Armes computes the volume of a cylindrical granary. Given the diameter d and the height h, the volume 5 is given by v equals 1 minus 1 9 D two H Display style V equals one minus one ninth D carrot two H In modern mathematical notation and using D equals two R this gives V equals eight nine two D two H equals two hundred and fifty six eighty one R two H Display style V equals eight ninths carrot two D carrot two H equals two hundred and fifty six eighty firsts R carrot two H the fractional term 256 81 approximates the value of pi as being 3.1605 an error of less than 1%. Problem 47 is a table with fractional equalities which represent the 10 situations where the physical volume quantity of 100 quadruple hecats is divided by each of the multiples of 10, from 10 through 100. The quotients are expressed in terms of Horus I fractions, sometimes also using a much smaller unit of volume known as a quadruple row. The quadruple hecar and the quadruple row are units of volume derived from the simpler hecar and row, such that these four units of volume satisfy the following relationships: one quadruple hecar. 
Topic: Four Hecar. 1280 row equals 320 quadruple row. Thus, 110 quadruple hecar equals 10 quadruple hecar. 120th quadruple hecar equals 5 quadruple hecar. 130th quadruple hecar equals 3 plus 1 quarter plus 1 16th plus 1 64th quadruple hecar plus 1 plus 2 thirds quadruple row. 140th quadruple hecar equals 2 plus 1 half quadruple hecar. 150th quadruple hecar equals 2 quadruple hecar. 160th quadruple hecar equals 1 plus 1 half plus 1 eighth plus 1 thirty second quadruple hecar plus 3 plus 1 third quadruple row. 170th quadruple hecar equals 1 plus 1 quarter plus 1 eighth plus 1 thirty second plus 1 sixty fourth quadruple hecar plus 2 plus 1 fourteenth plus 1 twenty first plus 1 forty second quadruple row. 180th quadruple hecar equals 1 plus 1 quarter quadruple hecar 190th quadruple hecar equals 1 plus 1 16th plus 1 30 second plus 1 64th quadruple hecar plus 1 half plus 1 18th quadruple row 101 hundredths quadruple hecar equals 1 quadruple hecar equals Topic Areas Equals Problems forty eight to fifty five show how to compute an assortment of areas. Problem forty eight is notable in that it succinctly computes the area of a circle by approximating pi. Specifically, problem 48 explicitly reinforces the convention used throughout the geometry section that a circle's area stands to that of its circumscribing square in the ratio 6481sts. Equivalently, the papyrus approximates π as 256/81sts, as was already noted above in the explanation of problem 41. Other problems show how to find the area of rectangles, triangles and trapezoids. Topic Pyramids The final six problems are related to the slopes of pyramids. A seeked problem is reported by If a pyramid is 250 cubits high and the side of its base 360 cubits long, what is its seeked? The solution to the problem is given as the ratio of half the side of the base of the pyramid to its height, or the run to rise ratio of its face. In other words, the quantity found for the seeked is the cotangent of the angle to the base of the pyramid and its face. <laughs> Book 3, Miscellany The third part of the Rhine papyrus consists of the remainder of the 91 problems, being 61, 61b, 62–82, 82b, 83–84, and «numbers» 85–87, which are items that are not mathematical in nature. This final section contains more complicated tables of data, which frequently involve Horus I fractions, several PEFSU problems, which are elementary algebraic problems concerning food preparation, and even an amusing problem, 79, which is suggestive of geometric progressions, geometric series, and certain later problems and riddles in history. The third part of the Rhine papyrus is therefore a kind of miscellany, building on what has already been presented. Problem 61 is concerned with multiplications of fractions. Problem 61b, meanwhile, gives a general expression for computing two-thirds of 1, n, where n is odd. In modern notation the formula given is 2 3 n equals 1 2 n plus 1 6 n 
Display style frac two three N equals frac one two N plus frac one six N. The technique given in sixty one B is closely related to the derivation of the two N table. Problems 62 to 68 are general problems of an algebraic nature. Problems 69 to 78 are all PEFSU problems in some form or another. They involve computations regarding the strength of bread and beer, with respect to certain raw materials used in their production. Problem 79 sums five terms in a geometric progression. Its language is strongly suggestive of the more modern riddle and nursery rhyme. As I was going to St. Ives. Problems 80 and 81 compute Horus I fractions of Hinu or Hecates. The last four mathematical items, problems 82, 82b, and 83 to 84, compute the amount of feed necessary for various animals, such as fowl and oxen. However, these problems, especially 84, are plagued by pervasive ambiguity, confusion, and simple inaccuracy. The final three items on the rind papyrus are designated as numbers 85 to 87, as opposed to problems, and they are scattered widely across the papyrus back side, or verso. They are, respectively, a small phrase which ends the document and has a few possibilities for translation, given below, a piece of scrap paper unrelated to the body of the document, used to hold it together yet containing words and Egyptian fractions which are by now familiar to a reader of the document, and a small historical note which is thought to have been written some time after the completion of the body of the papyrus writing. This note is thought to describe events during the Hyksos domination", a period of external interruption in ancient Egyptian society which is closely related with its second intermediary period. With these non-mathematical yet historically and philologically intriguing errata, the papyrus writing comes to an end. <laughs> <laughs> Unit concordance Since much of the more complex material in the Rhine papyrus is concerned with ancient Egyptian units of measurement, and especially the dimensional analysis which is used to convert between them, it can be helpful to a new reader to have a summarized account of exactly which units of measurement are used and mentioned at exactly which points in the papyrus. This is also a sensible item to present as an aid to a person who has no knowledge of ancient Egyptian units, to more rapidly make sense of the document or of expositions of the document. Therefore, a concordance of the units of measurement which are used throughout the papyrus is given below. Detailed contextual explanations of the units as they are actually used throughout the papyrus is given in the below content section. Topic. Content This table summarizes the content of the Rhine papyrus by means of a concise modern paraphrase. It is based upon the two-volume exposition of the papyrus which was published by Arnold Buffum Chase in 1927, and in 1929. In general, the papyrus consists of four sections, a title page, the two, end table, a tiny 1 minus 9 tenths table", and 91 problems, or numbers. The latter are numbered from 1 through 87 and include four mathematical items which have been designated by moderns as problems 7b, 59b, 61b, and 82b. Numbers 85 to 87, meanwhile, are not mathematical items forming part of the body of the document, but instead are respectively, a small phrase ending the document, a piece of scrap paper used to hold the document together having already contained unrelated writing, and a historical note which is thought to describe a time period shortly after the completion of the body of the papyrus. These three latter items are written on disparate areas of the papyrus verso backside, far away from the mathematical content. Chase therefore differentiates them by styling them as numbers as opposed to problems, like the other 88 numbered items. See also 
Ames Akmim wooden tablet Ancient Egyptian units of measurement As I was going to St. Ives Berlin Papyrus 6619 Arnold Buffum Chase Egyptian fraction Egyptian mathematical leather roll Eye of Horus History of mathematics Lahun Mathematical Papyri Moscow Mathematical Papyrus Alexander Henry Rind Rind Mathematical Papyrus 2, N-Table Seeked <laughs>